Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna try this again. This is that song. Salvage can create with love and skillful care. A home to last 300 years, a lifelong new career. I've come a salvage miner, dig out and save the souls. I've come a salvage builder, create the tiny homes. I've come a salvage hunter, find and save the best we can. Let's educate the people and they'll join us to the end. So I, I sing the song of Savage and I sing it very well Because it lasts for centuries There'll be much more to tell I don't know if anybody's going to be able to get on But I went ahead and changed clothes Make myself a little more presentable For Facebook and Whatever other entities might want to come and visit Is your patience wearing thin? Mine is. Seem like things aren't just going right these days. I sympathize. Is there anything we can do about it? I think there is. But what is that? And how do we get the word out? How do we tell others in such a way that they'll listen? This is a big struggle for me. In all my years, I have yet to figure out how you present something so that the masses who can benefit from it will pay attention. And once you get their attention, nowadays a fairly short attention span, how long can you keep it? Do you know what? As you begin watching this right now, about nine minutes. Isn't that sad? The attention span of an average American is a little over seven minutes. So when they get nine minutes, I feel like I've really stretched it. So guess what? My videos last for an hour. Why? You haven't got the persistence to watch a video that has a lot of little nuggets hidden inside of a lot of other stuff to go ahead and distract some paid for trolls and censors that don't like to sit around for an hour to go ahead and find out what some guy might be saying that they don't want to have the public know about. And when they do, they go and shut you off. Incidentally. Did anybody notice that last video disappeared entirely off the internet? So, I changed clothes. Do I look better? Do I look like a... Talking head, it's just talking fiction, spouting stuff. Don't worry about censoring me, knocking me off. Don't worry about any of that crap. I know there's electrical problems. There's all sorts of stuff so that I could be on here and I could be talking to people and they could be communicating and then all of a sudden they're gone. And so is all the stuff we did. First time it's ever happened. And simultaneously, while Trinity was trying to get on there, she couldn't get on. But there's other people that are talking to me. Years ago, I'd say, why would they ever want to shadow ban me? I don't talk about anything that's so bad. I talk about Second Amendment rights sometimes. I talk about being kind of anti-vax based. Unless you investigate it, prove to me it's good. doesn't have the Marisol, preservative, squalene, squalene for um, dilution, uh, child parts, baby parts, things like that. I'm cool. You get all that and make sure it's not in there and prove it to me. I'll be last on your list. Go ahead and get it. <clears throat> Now, on the other hand, you may find out before you get to me that there's a lot of problems and decide to not make everybody take it because it's killing too many people and making them turn all red, rashy, um, act like they got Parkinson's, weak, things like that. You know, some of the symptoms and some of the effects they've had so far guaranteed that you might have those. Guaranteed you might have those. And guaranteed if you don't take the vaccine, you will absolutely not have any of those complications or symptoms or death by vaccine. So... It's like COVID. If you get it, you got oh, a certain chance of making it, like uh, 99.8 for the most part. 
small percentage population is a 99% chance. Unless you go to Cuomo and uh, New York City or some places where it's not so healthy to get sick. And don't incentivize calling people sick this way when they're not necessarily sick that way, but you get money off of it. That's a bad thing. Incentivizing medicine. I mean, you stay sick, I keep making you money and... Oh, wait a minute. Well, that's not new. I, I forgot. I don't go to doctors much. I forget. They don't make money unless there's lots of people coming to them, staying sick. Hmm. Strange system for people like me that's just hyper logic where you want to stay healthy and never go see a doctor. I've been a couple times in my life and every time I go, the doctors look worse and worse and I look better and better compared to them. And after a while, you say, oh, wait a minute. Um, one of us is on the wrong path because if I keep looking better and you keep looking worse and you're going to die before me, one of us is going to probably have better advice if you want to stay alive. It looking like it's me so far. So I'm, I'm kind of avoiding those doctors. Their advice seems to be kind of dangerous. They're like Big Pharma, their friend. that pays them bonuses for all those good things that they give you that you keep taking as long as you come back every 30 days and get another checkup, have them make sure it hasn't killed you yet, and you can keep taking more of whatever toxin it is and hiding the, the symptoms of whatever it is you got that's really bothering you from eating bad and not getting enough exercise and all those other things is probably the real reason, if you're sick, that you're sick. I know. Sounds like a no-brainer, doesn't it? You'd be surprised how many people have trouble with that. Okay. Why did I come back on? To see if they would let me. Because when you're an imaginary talking head and you don't really exist and you're talking about a fantasy and you're used to talking to people on a certain format like this and then you got to go over there and try, to try it on YouTube again. And people like... Brian McNulty, who was very nice about telling me that your highness wasn't even able to see him. He couldn't be heard, hardly. I mean, he be seen, couldn't be heard. And he's so nice about it. You always make, want you to make, just see him come back again, doesn't it? Or not. Anyway, hey, Suzanne. There we go. We're getting some of our friends back. Look at that, Brian. So, um, what we're looking at next is to go ahead. I was trying to review this on there. It turned out there was no sound. Turns out the bottom dial is volume, not the top dial. Shit. Anyway, I hadn't used that speaker much. We hadn't done any YouTube much. We're used to being here nice and close and personal. It's a lot easier. But um, the goal to be healthy enough that you don't need to see a doctor, my goodness, absolutely. If you go to a doctor, you got two problems. One of them is you don't have good advice before you go. And two, you didn't take care of yourself, and that's why you got sick, generally. You rarely, rarely, rarely should have to go see anybody that's only been in the business his whole school, his whole background, 120 years. There are resources out there with information on how to get better, herbalists and all sorts of things um, that go back thousands of years. You know, so when you're in somebody's that practice in medicine, because it's a new business, it's been around for 125 years. You know, it's new. Yeah, I mean, if I got 5,000 years, like. Uh, you know, India, you know, that, that's a place that's been around a while. Or China, China, you know, not like the United States, 250 years old, 300 years old. No, China's <laughs> thousands of years old. Now tell me, also, by the way, I really do like the Chinese people. I love the Chinese people. Just like I love American people. You know, governments and uh, administrators and liars, cheaters, thieves, and greedy, corrupt people, period. No, I don't like them. If they happen to be in government, which it seems like a very large amount of them are, well, I don't like the government. Doesn't mean I'm going to go overthrow them. It just means I have an opinion, just like you. You can not like your government too, I think, can't you? Oh yeah, mostly. Let's just suppose. This is a big supposition that we're talking about. A word. Hey, up in Akron, you're about freezing too. Oh my goodness. Um, hey, Sarah, Deacon, we're getting people in here. Look at this. Mikey. Well, one by one, I'm actually getting people to come here and visit as we try to give away this million dollars. And I'm about to go ahead and give some more reasons on how and when to get it to tell your friends and the people you might want to go build a village with. So if you get enough of you together, you know how I hear this all the time. Allopathic mess, absolutely. Trauma, I keep, I mean, it's so Ayurveda, I'm absolutely into it. In fact, I have one of my houses. If you want to look at a really cool, tiny Texas house, it's called the Ayurveda house. It was actually made for, um, it went up to um, um, just west of Austin, as a matter of fact, um, bee caves. 
and uh, it was made for somebody's going to do Ayurveda medicine in there. And it ended up being used more for um, um, one of the kids, I think, lived in it in the end. Um, but it was uh, all beautiful colors. We used teak and all sorts of cool stuff. I haven't put any pictures of that one up in a long time, come to think of it. Very pretty house. Um, that went all the way out to the west side. Anyway, it has nothing to do with this except that that's a really cool house that if you wanted to make one of and use some of those many, many materials that I'm going to be giving away. And let's just say a million dollars worth of materials, two by fours, flooring, shiplap, B board, barn wood, siding, roofing material, trim for around the doors, the windows, um, almost all the windows have glass in them, old hand blown glass and nice early stuff. And if you want to winterize or make it more energy efficient, which I don't necessarily recommend too much of because it's good to have air in your house. You know, that stuff we breathe, oxygen. Not the rebreather stuff you get out of a tiny house on wheels made in a factory called a mobile home, except in our Orwellian world of mass media and TV and fads, it's called a tiny house on wheels or a recreational vehicle. And that is a ripoff. That's an opinion. And it's an opinion by an imaginary person in an imaginary world called Salvage, Texas, in an imaginary land of Wibblery and Wub. Clarification? Okay. Because we wouldn't want to get upset. Trolls and stuff like that. Gabe, Jaleef guy, I was trying to get notes to you. Dude, they wouldn't let me send you any messages. I don't know why. You're such a nice guy. I mean, come on. Patriot, helping out Americans, getting that great thing going on, and all of a sudden, zip. Oh, you can't have them anymore. Man. Gabe's a good guy. And he's supposed to be coming up here, Gabe, to get some materials, Gabe. Did you know I'm giving away a million dollars in materials, Gabe? And you know what that means. You actually went out there in the old days when you were young and slim. I remember that, Gabe. Your kids ever razzed you about that yet? I want you to come up here and get some exercise and help take down some of the building I got over there and haul it back and build some things out there at your place. Those buildings, those houses you want to do. I'm trying to give away enough to do... Um, a bunch of people starting tiny, organic, import-free, all-American built, using the elder's knowledge and all that stuff to go ahead and create housing for the kids that are coming back home and droves to take care of their parents is what they always say when they don't have a job. I'm going back to take care of my parents. Really? Who's got the money? My parents. I want to help them spend it. Yeah. Howdy. Joy. I must on the road or hopefully on a Rest stop. This is a horrible time to be on a road, Joy. Did you manage to avoid the wrecks? Please tell me. Oh, it's rough. Joy's one of the truck drivers that keeps you guys eating. Well, I don't know if she's hauling food, but she's a truck driver. A lot of respect for truck drivers. I got in trouble last time for saying too many good things about truck drivers, Joy. Can you believe that? Oh, my goodness. Anyway, trolls will get you on anything these days. He said, why are you giving Joy so much good compliments? I said, Joy represents an industry that this country would be dead, starved to death without. Besides no respect, they don't get enough pay. Yeah, anyway. Part of this series, I'm trying to tell everybody how to get the money that I'm going to give away. It's not money, it's in the form of goods, right, Gabe? Trash. You know how that trash works, Gabe. Gabe actually is doing a barnuminium and uh, has done a few things in salvage. And... Uh, the idea is if you teach your kids how to do this and everybody does things in salvage, Delinda, you're still kicking, girl. Good. I'm so glad to see so. Stay out of the hospital. The bad things to do. Keep away from the doctors. Delinda, hope you're doing better, sweets. Um, the idea behind this, the grounding, the healthy, the eating bentonite clay, a tablespoon a week at least. Um, oh, so many things I try to tell everybody. I try to cram me each time. But the idea is if we get these pure salvage outposts where each of the places we have, we construct houses there, teach kids how to do it, provide housing maybe for elders, for veterans, for those in need, and they get to participate. And I'm supplying a million dollars worth of materials to a bunch of different groups. We'll see how far we can spread the first million. And then if it works good, I'm going to supply another million of stuff. Now, people like Gabe, he may be able to tell you, I probably could do that. I've been around a while. No wrecks. Just broke down over the weekend. Oh, good. I'm glad you're home, Joy. This is a lousy time to be on the road. Especially in Texas. So, the idea behind this is, and, and Joy, help me out on this. 
I'm talking about shipping stuff. If I give a million dollars worth of stuff away, and it might be two houses to start with, you get those two houses built, you get more. Now, Joy's a trucker. She's driving down the road, and she drops off a load in Texas, and Texas is notorious for having nothing to put back on your truck to get the heck out of Texas and pay for your gas. So what do you do? Well, you take what's called a deadhead. Nothing. You pay for it out of your pocket. You pay any money? No, because you're a private small hauler. It's out of your pocket. Instead, let's just suppose, you cover your gas by helping somebody out, hauling their load of salvage from, say, mm, salvage Texas to uh, Louisiana, North Carolina, or wherever you happen to be going, you had to go home empty and get enough off of that to, say, pay for your gas and cover the front portion of your truck trailer. So you still got a chunk of it open and make some money if you find another load on the way. And then, look at that. You get transportation to haul salvage. Absolutely. So if I'm going to create a network of drivers who've got one direction and can't get back without picking up a load, and nobody's got a load, but we've got private industry. That means private people that are bartering and exchanging materials, and all they got to do is pay for the shipping to get it to you, which might mean paying for a fuel. Instead of a regular full load going through a broker and paying the broker, what is it, 15%, 10% nowadays? If he likes you. If he wants to give you the good loads and not give you the trashy loads, he knows it's going to take you into the worst part of town and uh, possibly tie you up for lots of hours in traffic or bad weather or some other thing. Because honestly, a good broker can help you out and a good broker can trash you if he gives you bad loads. And a lot of times they know what the load is and you don't because you're just driving down the road looking to fill your bag and back end up and you get a nightmare. And truckers will know what I mean. But for those of you who don't, Look out. Oh, good, Linda. Heat and water. Right now, anybody has got heat and water in Texas is blessed. And you notice I'm broadcasting. Thank you, thank you. I am blessed. And that's how I can help you guys out. So, I put the notes up on Facebook the other day. Did anybody do the homework and look at the notes? A couple of you did. I tried to say this on the other one. I'm repeating myself much as I hate to. Uh, we do have some candidates already for getting some of these materials. Oh, yeah, we do. Um... A bird sanctuary in a place that's actually trying to put something together and actually has proven themselves by building with salvage. The way to my heart is that you've already been doing it and not that you're going to start doing it the moment I give you a bunch of stuff. Because if your only incentive to do anything is that I'm going to give you something, then you're on the, you ain't got no proof. That's words. Now, the idea behind this is it's also, in case you didn't know, you got to be able to show the where, where you're going to do it. The who, who's the group of you that's going to do it? Because unless you're a superman and can do it yourself and got all the tools and got the land, that's just one of the things I got to do is look at your land, see if you got a good title, make sure you're not going to get screwed by not taking that. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. Uh, yeah, I thought about going into trucking and then everybody told me about what a hard job it is and, and, and it's not the great adventure. Travel around the country and see the country. It's like, no, you get in a cab and you're prison. And you get out of the cab and you got to sit there and watch and wait for people to take your shit off. And if they don't wreck it, take their dime at your expense and or make you sit in line for how many days? Stupid shit. For toilet paper. Thank you, Joy, for tolerating the system and staying in it. But I know, I know it's very difficult these times. And unfortunately, the big truckers can afford the hits. The little truckers can't. So by supporting the little truckers and having them carry these loads of a million dollars worth of materials around the country and dropping them off at places to people... That could help everybody out. And that's my intention, Joy. And so as we go along, and I talk about giving these away, over the next six months, that's a million dollars of material. And if it works, and we get some people out in, I've got places like now in North Carolina, Tennessee maybe, um, Montana. I think some people can bring their own transportation. But if they knew there was a trucker out there who put it on the back, and you know when you run down the road and you're covering gas, and gas gets down $3 a gallon, you're pulling... If you're lucky, eight dollars, eight miles a gallon. That's being generous. I know you're on the highway, but say you get eight dollars, eight gallons, eight, dollars, eight miles to the gallon. And so, if, if you're a thousand miles away, that's 120 gallons, and that's not a lot of fuel. And a tip, she might be nice and just let you have a load on there with a bill of lading and covering any taxes and just basics. So she covers her gas, and you both help each other out, and then you help build houses where you're at, and when she's there, you might have one empty, and she can stay overnight and get a shower and get all cleaned up, maybe have dinner as part of her payment and building a network of pure salvage outposts that will all need transport, because I got a lot of stuff, people. 
I mean, 200,000, no, no, it was 130,000 square foot in Gonzales of materials in warehouses and 35,000 square foot of materials in these warehouses. That's not just spread out on the floor side by side. No, that's stacked up really high. If you want to see, go online. There's videos of the, the, um, the drone flying through one warehouse I'm taking down. Got to take it down. Um, Oh, you built a tiny house. Yes, yes. It's so easy to build tiny houses compared to big houses. I assure you, you much rather build a tiny house, get done, feel great, do another one. You do a 6,000 square foot house and you don't get finished, man, that's a big failure. You do a 200 square foot house, you don't get finished, that's not so bad. I'll, I'll back you on that. But if you want to go build a 4,000 square foot house and you think, I won't go over there and he's going to give me enough to afford my big old houses, you're in the wrong TV show. What's this going to cost you? Honesty. Honor. Truth. Faith. Faith that there's a God might come along and do you a favor through various vehicles and channels that they have in those worlds to gift you with an opportunity you've been waiting all your life for. The chance to pull together the people you know and love that you've been talking to all these years. Won't it be nice when we get old? We can go ahead and retire and all move together out in this little place together and share growing and eating and cooking. And Oh, wait a minute. Where's your savings? Where's your nest egg? I ain't got one. Where's your nest egg? I ain't got one. Who's got the land? Oops. Okay. What do we do? Why do we do? Okay, you don't want to build on land, Brian, because as soon as you attach it to the land, it's no longer a portable building. And if it's not a portable building, then it's taxed as a house. If it's over 400 square foot. So there's a lot of things in Texas, at least, that I pay attention to because a loophole means I don't pay taxes as much as I would if I didn't abide by the loopholes. Honest, law-abiding loopholes. Not the cheater sort of lying crap that's being pulled up in Washington, D.C. by bidding on the commie government or something like that. In my fantasy book that I'm writing about, of course, it's not real, real, real. And I'm just not making comments for trolls and censors. I'm just talking about nonsense like I always do as a crazy person who's a writer who's giving away a million dollars. That's crazy of stuff. And what do you have to do? What do you have to pay to come to it? Oh, nothing. What are you going to have to do? Actually, you do have to do something. You have to prove that you have to people, honest people. I've gone through this on the other one. I'm going to go through a little more of it. When? Six months for the first million dollars. Six months starting yesterday. I already got two people, two groups that I'm interested in giving some stuff to. So they got to work through the logistics. How are they going to get it? Show me a plan. Show me a proof. Show me the people I got. Which show me people have built stuff already on the property. They're there. Um, they've got the land. Hmm, these are things you got to have. They've got some motion. Traction. Not distraction like they've been watching TV and a lot of shows. And they really want to do it, but all they've done it for their whole life is watch TV. That's distraction. That's not traction. You're not working toward anything. You're just watching TV and talking. <sighs> Too many talkers. Too many talkers. I got no time for talkers, son. Now, doers. People that have worked all their life waiting for that break that they really deserve because they've given a lot to help everybody out. And sometimes it's not because what you did, it's just circumstance that puts you eating out of that dumpster, sleeping on the street. And I say that as a person who has eaten out of dumpsters, who has slept outside in sleeping bags, nearly froze to death. I have been poor and worked my way up, just like you can. And I want to give people that opportunity. But I want to give it to honest people. Not that somebody wants to steal from me. I've done that. It doesn't work. Not if people want to take advantage. I've done that. It doesn't work. The good people that want to do work, that want to make a better world, that want to help their family or the new family they're creating, adopting, whether it's veterans, fellow humans that don't have anybody but themselves and it's getting kind of late, getting kind of ripe on the vine and you might want to go ahead and plant some roots and uh, maybe steward some things like make a village for the next generation two three four five because we got to do something because if i was i coming into the scene right now as a little kid and i was looking at being in the city and having to go through city schools and to have to do all the city vaccines and to have to do all that uh-uh 
That's a bleak world. My son, for those of you who don't know, left 10 years ago this month. So I'm more than a week away. He was off doing the wolf program, permaculture and stuff over in France and Spain and Morocco. Just wandering around, having a good time as a kid with a guitar, doing rainbow festivals and all the things kids do. But at 24, 25, you start to say, hey, maybe dad knew something. Maybe I should be looking at trying to do something. Maybe you should start settling roots. And maybe by 30 as a guy, you might actually think, gosh, I want to do something with my life and be responsible. It took me that long. I had my degree, but I went off on a bus to write the great American novel, and I looked kind of irresponsible to everybody in 1981. And before it was done, I was eating out of dumpsters and uh, figured out I needed to make some money because you don't just go to a publisher when you're eating out of dumpsters and have general delivery for your address and you're working on a demo typewriter. You just aren't going to write that great American novel. So you might as well go. Oh, and if you do go and they don't like it and they publish it, they don't want to put it on the shelf. They just say, oops, it's on the top shelf in the back. You say, great. Well, I'm going to sell it. And they go, we ain't never going to sell it. And you go, wow, wait, that wasn't the deal. Well, we haven't got time. We're going to market this, go market that. Well, can I do it? You can buy it. And at the time it was $40,000 to buy your book back. Damn. So I didn't do it. I waited 40 years instead, 30 years, so I could do this myself when I grew up one day. And then I got to be a kid again because I had to grow up first and get old. And then go back to being a kid so I could write again. So I could do these things that I couldn't do all the time. I was working like a freaking bandit supporting the government at 80 to 100 hours a week by having a bunch of employees that I could teach how to do shit so they could leave and quit and steal my stuff and break my tools and get unemployment and you want to help kids out of the prison but they don't mention oh by the way we got them on antidepressants and as soon as they get out while well, you get them fresh they are great when they run out of those antidepressants oh we forgot to give them a renewal on the script or the money but when they run out and they start to go bizarre crazy good luck what do you mean good luck Oh, you don't know? I don't know. What what happens to people that are on antidepressants in cold turkey? Uh, it ain't pretty. So what I'm trying to do is come up with ways for people that are having PTSD, veterans that are committing suicide, 22 a day, 6 out of 10 women on the street, veterans, 6 out of 10 guys on the street, veterans, and before we bring in a whole caravan of new people to take up all those spaces on jobs that don't exist that might come up one day in boxes, stores that don't exist, and we need more people to make sure that if we ever create those millions of jobs again that there's going to be lots of people available to keep the value of those jobs down hourly dirt cheap right that's what i'd want if i was a big corporation and wanted a bunch of cheap labor and couldn't go overseas to get it anymore i just want to pack it so damn full and make things so tough that anybody would do just about anything for a buck including take a cut and pay and work twice hours and oh my God, please don't fire me no matter what, sir. Just give me the vaccine, whatever it takes to keep my job. I'll do it. I'll do it. I cannot survive without this job. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. I got it. Thanks for the vaccine. What? You laid me off? But I just got the vaccine. Well, there's been a change in all the things. We didn't expect everything to go bad. We didn't expect some people to die from the vaccine. So therefore, we don't have many jobs now because everybody's dying from the vaccine and complications. And so, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I was channeling that other chapter again. Yeah, there's triggers messing with people, man. Is You can have a really good person. And the problem is, is the triggers all of a sudden, they lose it. They get angry. They get really impatient. They just totally go whack job. In an instance, and sometimes it's because of heavy metals, mercury, they got deposited in the brain from thimerosal, which is an additive they use in a lot of the vaccines in this uh, fantasy world I'm speaking of. That because the other one they deny in reality they're still using those things. They deny there's any sorts of parts for many babies. They deny there's all sorts of things in there, so they can't be in there because they deny that. But in the story I'm writing about, this fantasy world, there is a lot of stuff in there. They have the stuff that got to my son when he was. 20 years old and took the last vaccine in New York City. 
they required that he have vaccine meningitis to go to school up there, junior college. And uh, after that, he kind of had Asperger's symptoms, yeah. Yeah, you'd be talking to him, and he'd just, I and just walk away. End of conversation. No goodbye, thank you, how do you do, nothing. No sense of humor, nothing. Um, another lady, Sherry Davis, has three sons. Two of them geniuses, great kids, except for the autism that developed within 24 hours of having the shots. She watched their faces change, their smiles change, their world change, and spent the rest of her next 20 years in change, including doing salvage after coming to a seminar that I did to go ahead and be able to help get them through school and get them to college and all the hardships that come along with the difficulties autism brings to every family that it gets it. A big issue for me, guys. That's why I'm doing this. That's why part of this is so important, is so that you can develop these small communities, whether it be for religious reasons or otherwise. If you don't want your children vaccinated 108 times by the time they're 12 years old, which is recommended by the profit-driven CDC who owns all of the vaccine patents in this fantasy world of wibblery and wub where Darby is doing the best he can to get the word out to the world that there's maybe a matrix that might defile the truth on a regular basis for profit. I know it's too hard to imagine in reality that's why it's a fantasy. It's like the big lie that everybody might believe Okay, so you got to be able to come help load stuff, and then you can transport it on truckers like Joy. Yeah, Sherry's a sweet person. You're, yeah, you know our name. And she's got some wonderful kids. And it is heartbreaking what she's had to deal with because of vaccines. Oh, of course, they'll deny everything. And this will draw the trolls in. I use those magic words. Mm. But this fantasy land, trolls, you're coming to the wrong place. And FB, don't censor me, because I was just talking about a fantasy land where this great mother in a fantasy name's not being the same. They're just changed for the purposes of writing. I just happened to use Sherry Davis, right? And other people. So, for the purposes of what we're doing right here, last and last. Okay, move on, blah, blah, blah. I told you, you got to learn terminology, all this stuff. The idea behind this is to really... Really, yeah, don't, please, people, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't get those vaxxes. Yes, Angel, I don't have any doubt in my mind, personally. Uh, one of the reasons, by the way, I have 75,000 followers on this station, and then you, about a thousand of you will see this. Out of 72,000 people, 1,000 of you might get this. Why? Because I just talked about the wrong thing. Oh, excuse me. I talked the wrong way about the wrong thing. No, I talked the wrong way about the right thing. Yeah, see, because it's a fantasy. I got it right, guys. See, I got it right. Leave me alone. Don't knock me off again. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. Okay. I actually did get through this last time, but I was on the wrong thing. I was on YouTube and had the volume off. When? In the next six months, the first million dollars to be given away, shipped. If you can get here, it'll be gone. It'll be on your trucks in there. You'll have come here, spent three or four days here with a small, small crew to go ahead and learn how to put it together, look at the ones that are underway right now, finish them up, learn how to put siding on, learn how to put windows in. If you can move it and do it as fast as I'm talking, you can get out of here fast and then drive it home and start on yours. Investors are welcome. I do need more investors to help, help pay for some of the stuff, tools and stuff like that to make them safer. I'm the kind of guy that does really stupid stuff with old tools that you shouldn't do, and I don't want to go and set the example. That's why I don't teach. Because the people that teach you should teach you how to do it safely, and I don't. I teach you how to do it like you're some sort of crazy old man. And that's a bad way to build things. I don't use tape measures. Other people need to use tape measures. Otherwise, you'll build things crooked like I do. But I want to do it. I'm an artist. Some people are going to say, Ah, you built it crooked. We can't use it. Okay, finally, I need help. We want to go ahead and do some publishing. So anybody that happens to love publishing, editing, I've got five books. How to do salvage mining, how to do salvage building, how to go ahead and be a salvage hunter when you're driving down the road, Joy, and find all sorts of really good houses and get the rights to sell them for commissions or get the rights to buy them and resell them for bigger profits. 
That kind of stuff. That's a salvage hunter. Salvage miners, guys go tear down. Salvage builders. That's what I'm trying to do. So this is what these outposts are. I turned away millions of dollars of teardowns in the last few years. I've turned away 40 houses that I could have built that I don't want to build. I don't want employees. I'm not going to do it. But I want to send it over to you. Why should I ship it from here to the Badlands like we did, or from here to Oklahoma, or from here to Ohio, or from here to whatever? Build it there. It's $15,000 to ship a box of air down the road. Now, Joy will tell you, it's a box of air. It's wooden walls, six up, 16 foot in the air. It's 12 foot wide, and you got to have a car in front of you and a car behind you in some states. The police just love you because they get to write great big old tickets on you. We got 500 yards over the Oklahoma border before the policeman stopped us. And my poor black driver, he didn't exactly get treated the way I thought he should have been treated, but that's nothing. That's right. That's normal. It's Oklahoma. You think I'm being funny? No, I'm not. And so I went back to say, officer, officer, I know the taillight might be out of my fault. Oh, uh, guess what, officer? Get back in your car, he said. I'm not talking to you. So I'm up in the front with my truck and the trailer I'm hauling. I'm the front guy on this truck. Well, it turns out when you go into Oklahoma, the front guy can't have a trailer. I didn't know that. So I'm watching, watching. I see he's going to write a ticket. So I go back there again. And the officer says, I said, I told you to get back in your car, your truck. And I did. I got back in my truck. I turned the key. I got on and drove away. Good thing. I got down to the convenience store and parked over there waiting for my truck to get there. Because he said, the other guy said, I didn't mean for him to drive away. I was going to give him a ticket because he's not allowed to pull that trailer in front of you like that. Oops. So. I don't like Oklahoma. Build it up there. I'll send you the material on a truck with no special permits. And you can get up there almost for free. Price of fuel. But if you come over here with a semi and put a house on it that's too big, too tall, too wide, too many reasons to stop you, they just can't resist, and write you a commercial ticket. The difference between a commercial ticket is... $115 for brake light out for commercial ticket. And for a farmer trailer, it's $15 in Texas. Now, you can imagine the joy of riding commercial tickets for Joy Rogers as a driver compared to as a commercial driver. You ride her four tickets, you made yourself 500 quick dollars. And she's going to be so happy with you and thank you for pointing out all those defects in her truck. Right, Joy? Yeah, dollars, 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 dollars. That's all they're thinking about. And they're tacking it on these poor guys. And you, I mean, the worst thing that can happen to you is hit a way, way station. And all of a sudden, I did this with a house. Because I could chop two truck axles. One behind the other normally, you know. Mm -mm, and I chopped it, made it short, put one next to each other. So now I had two axles side by side. And 15 miles from we got to the house we're going to in Cachula, we're taking it down there. And we got to that darn way station. Now, it wasn't that my total weight was over. It's 26,000 pounds. That ain't so bad if you got two axles, one in front of the other. Not side by side. Still got the same amount of rubber on the ground, same amount of per square foot weight as you would have for two axles, one for the other. But it's one row of axles. You know, it's $582 if you put them in one row instead of in front of each other. Who'd have thunk? So, don't haul big ass boxes of air empty down the road. Besides the fact it's about we got half a mile before there in the state, people are supposed to route you and make sure you don't run into any problems, obstacles, or road construction. And Joey, you probably appreciate this too. When you got a big dually, and you got my axle was running uh, 10 and a half feet across. Normal axle is about maybe eight foot and change, 105, but usually 96. So we're going in there and all of a sudden, lo and behold, they're doing work on the highway. And they took off the outer, uh, yeah, you know, that little section on the outside called, in case something goes wrong, shoulder, it's gone. Eight inches of it. Besides that, it was gone. And they had those beautiful little yellow cones, orange cones that you don't want to drive over. And so the guys pulling the thing didn't do it. And therefore, we were so grateful for having two axles because two of those wheels were sticking out there in midair about a foot out on the side of the road over where there was supposed to be some road. And the other two wheels were holding us up. But if I hadn't had two axles in the rear, we'd have dumped the house just before delivery. Why do I not want to deliver houses anymore? Can you imagine? I got more stories. But believe me, don't deliver. You want to build them near where they are. If you can't build them in components, take them over there and put them together. These are the things I learned. Over 
years and years and years of doing the research and development for tiny houses on wheels, portable. No, on wheels, take it off, use the trailer, put it back on wheels and move it. Call Joy. Joy will have a special trailer. Joy will pull it down the road. If we have a special truck, she can pull it down the road with a special truck. And he's a toter. And then I built my trailers out of, uh, actually, believe it or not, Home Depot beams from their racks. They, they stopped having their own racks and leased them out. So they threw all their old ones away and gave them to a guy I knew for hauling them away. Store after store after store, he just had to drive up, put them on his truck, and drive them away and pay nothing for them. Now, how do people make a million dollars in salvage? How do you become a millionaire in the salvage business? Now, Joy, if you had an empty truck and you drove up to Home Depot and they loaded you up an entire truck as much as you could carry away to steal for free, and all you had to do is haul it away to get it in your possession and then it was yours. Could you make a dollar on that, Joy? If you had to pay your own gas. Maybe have somebody with their own forklift wherever you're unloading it at. And then run and get another one. And another one. And another one. He did that across 30 stores. Do you know how much steel racking there is in the lumber department of 30 stores? Yeah, I got some of that too. In fact, I may give some of that away as part of this prize for people that have the installation but don't have the racking to put this stuff on. And when it gets there... Ding! Bonus! Bonus! We are now throwing in to the the right contestant. We already have a couple. We already have a couple of this may work, may not work. I mean, if you get into it and somebody says, oh yeah, it's great, except my God says that guy's an asshole and we couldn't possibly have that asshole in our church if he has to come here and talk, walk, or be around. Nah, can't happen. Guess what? You don't have to worry about it. I ain't coming. Nor is my shit. I'm not saying nothing. Why? Because if anybody's that exclusive in their religion, they think God's not going to have to have everybody involved that he created to make peace. So that person's not going to find peace on earth. They aren't going to find peace in their church because they're not going to let anybody that doesn't agree with them in their church. And they get peace in their church. But peace on earth requires that we all get together and share the planet without killing each other. That's peace. And that means if we're Muslim, if we're Hindu, if we're Christian, I don't really... I'm not, I'm not trying to debate your belief system. I'm trying to debate an ecological question of how do we go ahead and fix the pollution of the world and live simpler and use less stuff and be sustainable, use less energy to build, use the old resources of the past, use our history, use our ancestors, use our life skills. Don't ship things all the way around the world when you got them right in your backyard. Don't go chopping new trees down when the best of the old trees are still there to be picked up, already sawed up to the right sizes, and ready to go to build again with. If code says you can't do it, then find a way to get outside code or change code. Get variances. And these things take the elders and the other people involved. And if the church gets involved and helps and because they want everybody to benefit and not just their own parishioners or whatever... I'm on board for helping every church, every organization, every veterans group, every elderly group, every kids group, every kids at risk group, a very important one. Adoptions. Anybody that adopts kids and wants to train them and has there's resources for those kids when they're turned out of the adoption families and onto the streets, they get some money to go ahead and get some training. That's what we're here for. Put up a, a place. Start it. As you build, as you got, I got another group. We're ready to build another house. Come get the materials. It might be four houses, five houses. It's so good. I get the second million dollars of materials out. And we're going to say, okay, come on back. Uh, you get another two. You got the kids. You're doing so good. If I was my son and I saw my son being able to go there, I'd give you a house just for that. My son stayed at some people's houses um, while he was traveling Europe and France. And they kind of played like parents to him or whatever. You know, you do if you help kids out. Like I've I've mentored kids. And while I brought my son up pretty well, and he had pretty good manners, you're in another country. I'm, I'm sure there were always times when he had to learn and adapt. Everybody needs to adapt to the country you're in. And be polite. Honor their, their morals. Honor their ethos. Not just go out there and flaunt, oh man, you guys gotta be crazy because you think this way. And you clean. Now we should shoot you all because you just don't think the way we do. And all the other garbage that Americans seem to think because we're supposedly superior. We're not. As an American, I say this. There's no superiority by your, your, your nation. There's no superiority by your race. There's no superiority by your, by your species. I've got my dogs I like better than some of the people I've met. That doesn't mean that those people aren't worthy of staying alive. 
but my dog's worthy of staying alive. And if one of those people come over here and try to kill my dog, and it's between me getting my dog killed and them dying, I'm going to tell you what, I may have to weigh very strongly which one's going to live. And my dog's got a good chance. Some people, my dog is more important to me. Why? Because they, those people, snakes, liars, thieves, they would put people under the bus, send them to war, kill them for money, sell their assets, sell their lives, kick them out of the houses, steal them, foreclose on them, kind of like the Federal Reserve chairman did to get so rich. What a world. If I were to write about this stuff, nobody would believe it's a fantasy book. They would think it's a reality book. And I don't want to write a factual reality history book. I want to write a fantasy book. And that's getting harder and harder to do. How do you mix reality with fantasy? You give away a million not real dollars. It's material. It's not even real dollars. Why? In fact, if you got... Let's say a house is $10,000 worth of materials. And you got five houses worth of materials. That's $50,000 worth of tiny houses. Maybe, you know, bigger houses, a little more. You might buy and say, hey, instead of 12 by 12, I want 12 by 20. And you kick in $4,000. And you buy extra windows and doors. And you go back and build a bigger house. Now, yeah. yeah. Oh, there's so many ways to get good energy. Whether it's Tesla and otherwise. You go out there and this is what I want. I want communities that show all these different ways to morph the concept of a pure salvage outpost into what it needs to be up north, in the northeast, in Maine, in Montana, everywhere, because they're all different. You build my house for Texas and stick it in Montana, and guess what? You're going to freeze your buns off in the wintertime because we don't build like that. Now, guess what? Whoops. This winter indicates... We're going to be building more like that. Yeah, honey. We might even build a few just here for finding out what it's like. So we got them here just in case this kind of weather comes around more often. And you know what? There's evidence it will. In the fantasy book, this is not the worst year. Am I clear? For all you man-made global warming religion freaks. Because I'm telling you what, I don't feel warmer. And it isn't because of my carbon gas or my farts. It's making Jupiter change and Uranus, Uranus changing and Neptune changing and Pluto changing. And they have to be changing in the opposite order. Pluto first reversed its atmospheric motion. Uh-huh. Like our winds started going the other direction. Not, 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 not an abnormal thing, right? It's every 12,000 years. Oh. And then we got the other one, the next planet in. Darn if it didn't doing the same strange shit. Now that must be that we just... You've been in your SUVs pointing them at Jupiter and Saturn, guys. Somebody's been messing around with them. Because humans got to be responsible for everything in the solar system, according to Gorish UN and the Chinese uh, party that has decreed this to be true. And now we have um, 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 a guy who's got this mask on. I can't tell who it is when he gets on there and mumbles some stuff and um, and then pretends to write and stuff. And, and and I don't know what's happened, but it looks to me like we got a problem in our country. Um, so I'm trying to do what I can. And that's get this stuff out there to people fast. Six months. Now, I put this down. I get the notes. Everybody go to bed. We'll see you later. I know. I'm going, Linda. Thank you for reminding me. See you later, guys. Talk to you tomorrow.